today I want to talk about when God's will becomes our reality. When God's will becomes our reality. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. And I read it in the NLT. It says, only I can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan will come to pass. For I do whatever I wish. Amen. For I do whatever I wish. I want to talk about when God's will becomes our reality. Let's talk about the will. The will. The will of God. There are two words in the Greek language that describe the will of God. And I like them because they capture everything. You don't have to say God's will. One of them is bolema. B-O-U-L-E-M-A, which refers to God's sovereign will. And this is the predetermined plan for everything, right? That happens in the universe. The second one is telema, T-H-E-L-E-M-A. Not that you're going to speak Greek. I'm saying this so that you can understand the words. And it refers to a wish, a strong desire, the willing of some event, right? And it signifies God's gracious disposition towards something. So there is something called God's will, right? And I like the definition that I've put up there, which is the will means to determine, to decide in the mind that something shall be done, right? Implying power to carry the purpose into effect. In this manner, God wills whatever comes to pass. So God has a will, and it comes to pass. Whatever he wills will happen, right? That's God. And so God's will refers to what God wants. God wants certain things. And, 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 and people who do God's will are blessed. People who deliver what God wants are blessed. And you can read it in Mark chapter 3, verse 35. It says, anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister. And this is Jesus saying it. So anybody who enables the sovereign will of God and what God has determined is blessed. This is what Jesus says. Right? Um, but to go back to, excuse me, uh, Isaiah 46. When we read in Isaiah 46, it, uh, it says that uh, only God can tell the future, right? Before it even happens, because he knows. He created the, the world and the earth. And he wills certain things, right? And then he says, I, only God can do that. And, and, and then he says, Everything I plan will come to pass. For I do whatever I wish as the creator. That means, actually, there's nothing that you and I can do when God has said, it shall happen. It will. It's a very strong word that now will happen. That's God's will. Now, and in, the, in different versions, it says, uh, in essence, what you get here is that God has comprehensive control. He has control of whatever happens. Events, and uh, he'll do acts that match whatever his will is. And in, in the MPC, it says, I will do all my pleasure and the purpose. So God's will, he'll do all his pleasure and purpose. And uh, he does whatever he wishes. That's God's, that's his will. He does whatever he wishes. And when something, so the point is, when something is in God's will, it is what? Done. It's done. 
It doesn't matter what the devil plans to do, whether he tries to tempt Jesus after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus is going to the cross. Whether he says to Jesus, actually, we can, we can, uh, we can short-circuit this process. I can give you the whole world if you just bow down to me. Jesus says, no, no, no. I'm not getting the whole world by bowing down to you. I'm going to wear the cross because it is my Father's will. So in essence, even we who live in accordance with God's will, it is important that we understand the will of God. And the will of God cannot be stopped. Can I repeat that? It cannot be what? Stopped. It cannot be overthrown. It cannot be destroyed. It will happen. You get me? That's the will of God. Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 38 to 39. Let's read. And this is Gamaliel. He's speaking here yeah, after they had arrested Peter and them for saying strange things. They were speaking and preaching the gospel. And they arrest them, these men, and they say, these guys have been healing people. By what name are you doing these things? And they bring them before the elders to try them. And listen to what Gamaliel says. He stood up. And he says in verse 38, Now in the present case, let me say to you, he's not telling Peter and them, he's telling the other elders. He says, in the present case, let me tell you, stand off. He says, withdraw from these men and let them alone. Don't arrest them. For if this doctrine or purpose or undertaking or movement is of human origin, it will fail. Overthrown and come to nothing. He says, well, whatever these guys are talking about, just withdraw. Because if it is their own effort, let me repeat that. If it is their own what? Effort, it will fail. It will be destroyed. Their undertaking and purpose will not succeed. Can I stop here and say something to you? They were saying this because they were biblical scholars. They had understood the scriptures. And they were saying, we know what we have been taught about God. We know our religion. Now, these people are teaching something new, which is different. We actually nailed somebody to the cross for this very thing. But Gamaliel says, guys, don't worry. If what they are teaching and doing and engaging in is of men as against God, God, it will fail. Meaning, things that you do, activities that you engage in, plans that you make, which are not of God for your life, they are doomed to do what? To fail. They may look like they are succeeding for a while because, by the way, God has given you the ability to do things and to carry out plans. Your plans may look like they are succeeding for what? For a while. But if they are not consistent with God's will for your life, they are doomed to do what? To fail. So Kamaliel says, if what they are doing is man-made, it is doomed to what? To fail. But listen to what she says in verse 39. But if it is of God, <laughs> you will not be able to stop it. And if it is of God, you will be unable to overthrow it. If it is of God, you will not be able to destroy them. Yo, you might even be found to be fighting God himself. Oh, I love God. If you are carrying out his will and there is stuff that wants to destroy, oppose, or disorganize its will, that thing is coming against who? God himself. You are fighting what? 
the will of God. When he sets it in motion, you can't stop it. Pharaoh tried to stop it. <laughs> he was overwhelmed by the sheer force of God's will. When he had said to Moses in the desert, my children are going out of Egypt, Pharaoh tried. But when God's will is in motion, no Pharaoh, no army can stop it. Or when God sets things in motion because he said to David in the privacy of his family and his brothers gathered, only Samuel was there who anointed him as king. And one day he emerges. Even Saul could not stop him. He tried to use a spear to kill him. He couldn't stop him. Goliath tried to come out with stuff against him. He couldn't stop him. Because when God sets things in motion, nobody can stop his will. Or they, they tried. His, the brothers of Joseph tried. He was raised as a boy and blessed to be a dreamer and to save the nation of Israel because God had said, a nation shall arise out of Abraham and Isaac came and Jacob came and then they, Joseph was supposed to rescue them from famine. His brothers thought they were killing him. They sold him to slavery. Slavery could not contain the will of God. They sent him to the house of Potiphar. Potiphar tried to send him and his wife, they tried to send him to prison but they could not contain what was coming. Sit Citizenship did not matter. In fact, it didn't matter where he came from. And one day when God is ready and puts things in motion, you cannot stop, destroy, or offset God's will. He arose and became the prime minister of Egypt. In, pre in the present day context, we are born if God had decided that a foreigner or a Nigerian is going to rise to the higher echelons of power in South Africa. You can insult them and be xenophobic. You can call them whatever you want to call them. But when God sets the wheels of motion, his will to happen, it does, you can't stop it. You may be fighting who? God himself. How nice it would be for you to be standing in God's will and let whatever opposes God's will from happening fight who? God himself. Uti, I am removing myself. Deal with him because he's the one who wills what I am doing. That's the will of God. It can't be stopped. Once it's in motion, it's in motion. Amen. So you are standing. If you are standing in the will of God, you are standing in the right place. But can I show you something? Your response, your response to God's will is very critical. Your response to God's will is what? Very critical. We read the story of Sarah. Sarah and Abraham were married. And God speaks to Abraham and he says, I am going to make you into a what? A great nation. And that was God's will that Abraham was going to become the father of what? Nations. Before Abraham and being the father of nations stood what? Barrenness stood what? Age and stood what? Nothingness in Sarah. But one day God sends men and they come and Abraham makes food for them. I like this whole scenario. Abraham makes food for them and then stands under a tree and watches them eat. I don't know why Abraham was doing that. I don't know if he thought they'll run away without eating. But they ate as they are having their lunch. And the, 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 the men say to Abraham, Abraham, where is Sarah? Because God has sent us here to pronounce that. that that thing that he told you about the will of God is in motion now. He's going to make you a father of nations. Even though we're having the lunch, that lunch is not our main business. Our main business is to tell you what the will of God is about you and Sarah. And so the men say, oh, this time next year, Sarah will have a child. And Sarah is listening and she laughs. Because what is she laughing at? Abraham is a broken man. She has no womb to carry anything. And they are of an advanced age. But the will of God says, out of the broken womb, the child shall come. Out of this aged man, a child shall come. Out of these two people, a nation will be born. When Sarah loves, God says, I can hear you. 
Why are you laughing? Because you see no age, no health, no brokenness can stop the will of God when it is in what? In motion. And so God says, I'm coming back next time this year. You'll have a child. Oh, believe me, what happened is that indeed, after a year, Isaac arrived and the will of God was in motion. Isn't it interesting that angel who appeared to, to Daniel and said, Daniel, I've been fighting battles there. I've come to bring an answer to you that uh, the things that you've been praying for are coming. He shows up in the New Testament. He shows up to Zachariah. Zacharias and his wife, Elizabeth, were, were like Abraham. You see this thing. You see God has power to give you a child even if the doctors have pronounced that there is nothing in you. If it is in God's will, to give birth to life you shall give birth it doesn't matter what doctors have said it doesn't matter what the weakness is if it is in his will it will happen so he comes and, uh, and says, in the, and, and Zachariah is praying. He's a prayerful man. And, and then the angel Gabriel comes to him and says, Hey, Zachariah, I've arrived. I've come to do what? To pronounce the will of God. Let's read what he says. So in verse 11, Luke chapter 1, verse 11 says, Zachariah was in there. I, I want to take it uh, uh, in verse 13. Now let's take it from verse 11. While Zachariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zachariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid. Right? Zachariah, God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth, look at what it says, will give birth, give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will, will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit and will turn away Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare everything. I counted about 11 will, 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 will. In the man came. I mean, I would have been overjoyed if I was Zachariah. I would have been saying, oh, God is making declarations himself. He's made 11 declarations in me. He is backing all of them up with his word. He's not only pronouncing that I have a son. He tells me what the son is going to look like. He tells me the impact will have on people. He, t he says he will, he will, he will, he will. But listen to Zachariah. He had been praying about this. This is what Zachariah says. Uh, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now and my wife is also well along in years. Zachariah is a priest. Can I tell you, Zachariah knows the Bible. He knows the scriptures. He knows about Abraham. He knows about Sarah because he swears by Abraham, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's our God who took us from Egypt out of slavery and brought us into the promised land. He knows everything about that. But when God, Gabriel, who sits in the presence of God himself, comes to tell him the good news, he says, how can this even happen? He says, how can I be sure? He doesn't say, how can this happen? He says, how can I be what? How much more does he need? That is a response of unbelief. Zachariah's response it's the same as Sarah's response of laughing. Do you know that there are many of us, when God says, when God reveals his will about your life, you say, how can I be sure that you can even deliver? You don't need to verbalize it. You just need to act. You act in unbelief. 
And so Gabriel says, I'm not even going to ask you why you are saying this. I want to stop you from pronouncing against God's will. I'll shut your mouth because you're about to destroy stuff that God wills. So nothing is going to stand against what the will of God, not even your mouth. Oh, by the way, he needed his mouth to continue as a priest. And God says, I don't want to hear from you until my will is done. Can I tell you something? That son was not Zachariah's son. That son was a servant of God. Zachariah was just about to pronounce against the big will of God and plan that he had. And God was saying, I'm not having any of it. Can I say something to you? Don't speak against the will of God in your life. For God may be about to do great things and you are impacting great things through your negative speech of unbelief. When that angel is done, because the angel is on a mission, the, the angel is sent again now to appear to Mary and says, Mary, I'm here. Mary is not married. Mary is only engaged and Mary has never met any man. And he says, Mary, I'm here to tell you, you shall bear a son. And his name will be Jesus. And he will be this, he will be that, and he will be that. And Mary says, oh! Mary is afraid. And he says, don't be afraid, Mary. Listen to Mary's response. She says, but how can this happen? You must notice the difference between Sarah's response and Zachariah's response. She says, how will this happen? She doesn't doubt it will happen. She just wants to know the formula. You know why? Because she's, she's not married. She's never met anybody and doesn't know how this God is going to deliver his will. So when you read these two things, understand that there is a difference in the response. And I pray that you will respond like Mary did. Don't doubt the will of God, but seek his face on, Father, how are you going to really do this thing? I receive it, but I am fr I'm frustrated by not knowing you are making me carry a big thing. Your will is so great, you have pronounced it on me. I am just praying, how will this happen? And then Gabriel says, well, let me tell you how it is going to happen. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you shall give birth to a son and you shall call him Emmanuel for he is the king of kings. And you know how Sarah responded after it says, oh, I love her words. She says, well, but, well, for if you read in verse 3, it says, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Can I tell you the biggest problem that Mary had? Nobody, her experience and encounter with Gabriel was not televised. She had no recording to show people that the reason why I'm like this, I have not slept with Joseph. I have not done anything wrong. It was God. The fear of the shame, the fear of possible rejection by Joseph, the, the hardness of explaining to people that I've not done anything dodgy would have probably played in her mind because unfortunately her expression and encounter with God was not televised. Can I say something to you? There are things that God wills in your life which nobody understands. And actually it is not for everybody to understand. It is for you to know and walk in the will of God. Sometimes it will cost your reputation. Sometimes it will be risky because you don't know really how it is going to happen. But the only thing that you stand on is the will of God. Don't be afraid. Have faith in God. 
and rely only on God. I can see Moses walking. I can see him leading the children of Israel, not knowing how this is going to happen. His walking is leading everybody. And he knows that according to the geography of God, we are going to come across the Red Sea. He has never ever crossed the Red Sea, walked on water, there was no boat, nothing. But he's leading people. All he has is the will of God. God has said, I've heard the cries of my people and I'm leading them to the promised land. And when they get there, everybody is crying and saying, Moses, how are we crossing this? I can see the Egyptians are coming and they want us back. But here we are facing the Red Sea. And Moses, all he could do was say, I had an encounter with God. And my encounter with God was not televised. Nobody recorded the burning bush. I don't care if everybody believes it or doesn't believe it. Today we are crossing the Red Sea. And only the only thing that Moses did, he, he did not trust the stick but he trusted the will of God that was behind the stick. And when the time came, Moses lifted up the will of God. He did not lift up any stick because the stick cannot do it. You can go and try. But when the will of God is behind the stick, when the stick struck the sea and it opened up and Moses said, hallelujah, they were all amazed. What they didn't know was that the revolution was not televised. It was only God and Moses and they walked on dry ground and the Egyptians thought they could step on the will of God. It was not the will of God for them to step on the path. Or the only people for whom were part of this movie was the people whom God pronounced. Can I say something? When God has his will for you, only you can walk in that will. Other people have no business being part of something that God is doing which is only meant for who? For you. Stand in the will of God. It can be reversed. The only thing that I'll say to finish this morning is that you see with God there's nothing impossible. Can I repeat that? With God, there's nothing impossible. Can I tell you who, who said those words? It was not Mary. <laughs> it wasn't Mary. It was not Zachariah. Can I tell you who said, with God, there's nothing impossible? The man, the being that stands in front of God, who has seen God orchestrate things through the ages. Gabriel himself, he says, can I tell you Mary, I stand in the presence of God. I serve God. I go up and down pronouncing what God has got to do. I, I just pronounce it to Elizabeth. In fact, Gabriel tells, do you know who told Mary that uh, 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 Elizabeth has got a child? It was Gabriel. He says to Mary, hey Mary, just, I've just told you now, your cousin is five months pregnant because I stand in the presence of God. I make people do things, things that are impossible. I just told uh, 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 Zechariah and Elizabeth that they're going to have a child and they're five months pregnant. And Mary would have thought, Elizabeth, the one who could not conceive with Zachariah, who had nothing, was impossible. And God says, and Gabriel says, yes, it is Gabriel who says, for there is nothing impossible with God. I don't know who you want to tell you. Who do you want to pronounce on the power of God? The word of God never fails. Saints, the power of God, I don't have time. The will of God overcomes what I call physiological obstacles. You know what physiological obstacles? The weakness of the body. If you want evidence, go and see what God did with Abraham and Sarah. Go and see what happened with the woman with the issue of blood. When God's will is that it shall happen, every physiological thing succumbs to the will of God. You see, the will of God can overcome social obstacles, the stigma of, of Mary not being married, not being having slept with the men. When the will of God is in motion, it overcomes a social stigma. Oh, remember that woman by the well who, who had been despised by everybody, insulted by everybody. But it was the will of God that she shall receive everlasting water and never thirst again. When Jesus forgave her, she could walk tall, she could go and collect 
collect water at the right time because when the will of God is in motion, it overcomes social stigma. They can call you you're a drug, drug addict, you're a drunkard, you're a, you're a loser. But when God comes, when it is his will that you are mended, it overcomes social stigma. Or the will of God overcomes the physical obstacles. Oh, I know. I've just told you about the Red Sea. A big mountain can stand in front of you. But if it is the will of God that you are walking through this thing, you will walk through it. They can make fire and throw you into the fire. If it is in the will of God that physical obstacles, you shall walk in fire. He will be there in Basuti. Oh, Jehovah can overcome lack. He can overcome lack of finances. One day, there were 5,000 people who had come to hear what? The word of God to pen. But the will of God can overcome financial obstacles and lack. All you need to do is stand away in the will of God. And finally, if you don't know the will of God, can I tell you what you've got to occupy yourself with? Your biggest occupation must be, I want to know the will of God for my life. If you don't know the will of God for your life, I'm saying, this morning. Go and find out about the will of God for your life. And when you get it, Can I tell you sometimes, sometimes circumstances will want to remove your spiritual eyes from you. It will want to decapitate to you from it. But when you are like, you are like Samson, you say your will, Father, is that I die with them. I kill them. Bangang kipamesho. Bangang embarasa. Bangang zagonke. Koto wamum kele. Gyongkena. Nso bamba. Noma isimo. Sangang zuguti ngaboni luto. Kota ngyabona. Ngyabona nga mesho nga moya. Ugute yaku intando. Iti gibambelele lapa. Nso because he knew the will of God. And he prayed only once and said, Father, give it to me again. Give it to me again. Because it is your will that these Philistines die with me. You see, when you know the will of God, it doesn't matter good pertaining our way. For your life. For your life. Fight him. Fight who? Him. Not me. That's when the will of God becomes your life. You'll be victorious. Victory upon victory. Go back to the pillow. 